What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a super killer amp that I just picked up at a pawn shop at a ridiculous price. Let's get into it. And here we are guys. That amp is a 65 Fender Deluxe Reverb that I picked up at one of my local pawn shops for just over $500 after taxes. If you guys can't tell by now, I'm pretty much a gear junkie. Uh, in my local area, I'm always looking for good deals on Facebook or pawn shops, music stores, whatever. This is actually the very first vendor amp that I've ever owned. Uh, normally, I love the clean channel on my Mesa Boogie Lone Star, so I've never really had that connection with Fender like some of the other people out there may have. Uh, but as soon as I brought this home, I was a little skeptical at first uh, just because of how cheap it was. I mean, it was at a pawn shop, so I have no return policy. But I do love learning and working on amps uh, whenever I have the chance to, so I figured why not? I went ahead and pulled the trigger, brought it home, and then as soon as I fired it up, it all made sense. Now, we will go to the back of the amp, and I'll show you guys what speaker it has in it. So here we are at the back of the amp, and check it out. It's got a Celestion red back in it. So as soon as I had turned the amp around in the pawn shop, I was blown away. I was like, wow, you know, I've never, uh, never recorded or even heard a Celestian Redback in person. And then I looked at the price tag and it was $479. Of course, after seeing the price, my first thought was, oh man, there's, there's definitely something wrong with this amp, but I went ahead and bought it anyway. Uh, one of the downsides to this is it did not come with a foot switch which is okay, they're only $50 brand new, so I'm gonna go ahead and order one. So not a big deal about the foot switch missing. Now, I do want to mention that as soon as I turned this on, I wanted to hear the reverb on it. And uh, the reverb did not sound quite right, so I'm gonna show you guys the inside of the reverb tank because I actually ended up replacing it with a direct replacement from Mojo Tone. So here is the original Accutronics reverb tank for the amp. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, it's still, it's not been modified. This is a great reverb tank. It's made in Illinois, right in the United States. But then when I flipped it over, oh man, what do you know? A broken spring. So I knew that I had to replace it. Now, from Mojo Tone, the direct replacement for the deluxe reverb, I think I paid $38 or $50 for it, so it's a relatively cheap fix if you run into this issue. Here is the part number from Mojo Tone for the reverb tank replacement. Uh, it sounds really good, and uh, we're gonna plug the amp in here in just a minute and do a demo, but it seems like when you go past maybe two or three on the reverb knob, it just gets to be too much. So if you guys have any experience with this, please drop it in the comments. I'm unsure if the reverb is supposed to be this crazy, or maybe it's just me thinking that, you know, experiencing reverb uh, that's built into different amps that I own. I'm not entirely sure, but if you have experienced this before, please leave it in the comments. Let me know if this is normal or not. Okay guys, so I've got the deluxe reverb fired up. I'm uh, miking up my Bogner 412 cabinet with an SM57 on a green back and that's running through my Phoenix Audio DRS-1R 500 series mic preamp straight into my Apollo Twin. And here's how it's sounding. So it sounds pretty good, very Fender clean. I mean, that's it's kind of what you see is what you get. I think the amp sounds great. Let's go ahead and crank up the volume. I did notice that it starts to distort pretty quick, but I guess that's not a bad thing either. So sounds pretty good. Let's uh, go ahead and switch over to the vibrato channel and then I will start to show you guys what I'm talking about with the reverb. 
Okay, so I'm plugged right into the high input on the vibrato channel with the reverb completely off right now. And I mean, it still sounds really good. But once I turn that reverb up a little bit, I mean, there it is just barely on. It seems like it's already quite a bit of reverb. Now, of course, like I said, this is my first Fender amp, so I'm unsure about if it's supposed to sound that big. Maybe it is. I, I could be definitely wrong. But then it just gets insane. See, that, that ring at the end, I, I don't know. There it is, off again. About right there seems to be very usable in my opinion. So I went ahead and kicked on my Keeley compressor in the front of the amp because, well, it just sounds really good with the amp. I mean, listen to it. So that's going to wrap up this demo of my Pawn Shop Special 65 Fender Deluxe Reverb. If you guys have any experience with the reverb tank issue or any other issues that you've ran into with a 65 Deluxe Reverb, leave it in the comments, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to hear from you guys about your awesome amps and some good stories. Until the next video, see you guys.